good morning and welcome you all to this first session of the course on fluid machines. Now, as I have already mentioned in the brief introductory session of this course that fluid machine is a device that converts the stored energy of fluid into mechanical energy and vice versa. The stored energy of fluid usually appears in the form of pressure, velocity or temperature by or uh, intermolecular or thermal energy by virtue of its temperature, while the mechanical energy is obtained a, by a rotating shaft. Now, the use of fluid machines already I mentioned is very wide in the industrial applications. The major applications pertain to electric power generations, aircraft and rocket propulsions and in a varieties of medium and small scale industries. In electric power generations as you know the turbines are used which are the main important components or power producing components of the unit. For aircraft propulsions compressors are used, centrifugal compressors and axial flow compressors. Again for industries where high pressure air is required and this is used in almost all process industries, the centrifugal compressors are used. Similarly, for transmission and distribution of water or liquid circulation of liquid pumps are incorporated in industrial applications and almost all industrial applications are involved with such applications or such uh, operations of transmission and distribution and circulation of liquid. So, therefore, we have already appreciated starting from a very routine industrial application to a very high tech industrial application the uh, fluid machines, turbines, pumps and compressors they are used. Now, at the outset of this course with this short introductory idea as the preface, I will start with the classification of fluid machines. Let us start with the classification of fluid machines. Now, fluid machines are classified in various ways depending upon the different aspects. The first classification is based on the principle of operation. And based on this principle of operation, we classify the machines into two groups. One is rotodynamic machines, another is positive displacement machines. Now, rotodynamic machines are those machines where the energy conversion between the or energy transfer between the fluid and the machine takes place due to a rate of change of angular momentum of the fluid in course of its continuous flow through a number of blade passages comprising one or more moving rows of blades. That means, in this category rotodynamic machines there should be there has to be a continuous flow of fluid through blade passages and there has to be a relative motion between the fluid and the blade. And this way we can tell that the principle of rotodynamics is based on the principle of fluid dynamics. Whereas, in a positive displacement machine what is done is that some mass of fluid is taken as a closed system or is entrapped under certain uh, at some locations of the machines and then by the physical displacement of one of the boundaries is volume is change and accordingly the pressure change is manifested. So, or the vice versa the pressure high pressure is being converted to mechanical energy. So, in this case this energy interaction takes place by changing the volume of a given amount of or given mass of fluid as a closed system by a physical movement of the boundary that is why the name positive displacement machine has come or is given. This type of machines based on this type of principles are seen in the form of a reciprocating piston cylinder. That means, this principle is utilized by executing a reciprocating motion of the uh, 
piston in a cylinder while entrapping certain amount of air or certain amount of water within it. And those machines are known as reciprocating engine or reciprocating pumps or compressors depending upon the direction of the energy transfer that I will tell afterwards. So, based on these two uh, principles of operations to different principle operations, we define one as rotodynamic machines and another class as positive displacement machines. Now, the rotodynamic machines we will discuss mostly the rotodynamic machines in this course, which is based on the fluid dynamical principle of rate of change of angular momentum of a continuous flow of fluid through rotating blade passages can be classified like this based on the direction of energy transfer. If you see the classification is like this, where the input energy is stored energy of fluid and the output energy is the mechanical energy. Those machines are known as turbines and depending upon the type of fluids used, they are classified as hydraulic turbine which use water, gas turbines which use gas, which are generally the mixture of air and the products of combustion by burning the fossil fuel for this purpose and the steam turbine which use steam that is used in thermal power stations. So, these are the turbines gas hydraulic turbine, gas turbine and steam turbine operate mostly on the same principle, but use different types of fluid. Now, the fluid machines where input energy is mechanical energy that means, the machines which absorb mechanical energy or take mechanical energy as input and deliver stored energy of fluid as output is are known as pumps, compressors, fans and blowers. Actually, there is no generic name like turbines. So, they are termed by different names and the different names have meaning otherwise that depending upon the different fluids. For example, pumps which use liquid mostly water, compressors that use air and in both the machines deliver stored energy in the form of fluid pressure. So, high pressure liquid and high pressure air we get as the output from pumps and compressors, where fans and blowers they use air, but their stored energy of fluid is in the form of velocity. So, they deliver high velocity air that means, high flow of air which comes from fans and blowers. So, this is the preliminary classifications of fluid machines. Now, we will develop or deduce a very simple expression of the energy transfer between the fluid rotor and the uh, machine rotor, fluid machines rotor and the fluid. So, this thing we will do now. Let us see this picture. Now, where we have shown the components of flow velocity in a generalized fluid machine. Now, this is a generalized rotor or a rotor of a generalized fluid machine, a representative typical rotor of a fluid machine, which is shown as a circular disc rotating with a constant angular velocity omega and this is mounted on this shaft. Now, here we consider a radial location R 1, where the fluid in enters to the machine that is the inlet to the fluid. Now, fluid inlets at all point on the radial location R 1. So, R 1 is the radial location, so where the fluid takes comes into the machine that is the inlet of the fluid. Now, there are certain assumptions in this uh, deductions. The first assumption is that we will consider the fluid which is entering into this machine at different radial locations that means, over the azimuthal locations at the radial location R 1 is uniform that is uniform over the azimuthal location over the periphery that means, the fluid inlet is uniform with azimuthal location that means, that any look point here 1 the fluid velocity v 1 is the representative fluid velocity of inlet. Similar is the outlet where we define a outlet at a radial location 2, where the fluid velocity v 2 represents a representative velocity of the outflow velocities, since the outflow velocity around this periphery or around the 
about the azimuthal location is uniform throughout. So, this uniform flow velocity is one assumption. Next assumption is that flow is steady. That means, the mass flow rate across any cross section at any radial location is same. There is no mass accumulation, no mass depletion within the rotor. The flow is in the at the steady state, no mass, no energy accumulation or depletion within the rotor. And another very important thing you have to know that here we will deduce the expression for the energy transfer under these assumptions with another basic consideration is that we are not going to solve any fluid mechanics or the fluid dynamics or the flow field for the fluid flow here. That means, given a prescribed inlet flow field, we are not finding out the outlet flow field. Here, we will assume both the inlet and outlet our flow field is given. So, the solution of the flow of the fluid within the rotor is not of our concern. That is very complex and that requires a CFD tool. So, therefore, that is beyond the scope of this course. This is usually done in an advanced course on fluid machines or turbo machines. So, therefore, we will accept the solution, the flow velocity at the outlet at a radial location of the rotor and this flow is uniform over the entire azimuthal direction. Similarly, at another radial location where the fluid enters into the machine is uniform over the entire azimuthal location and at any point at the radial location the inlet velocity is the representative of the in uh, all the velocities at all the points are representative of the mass flow at the inlet similarly that at the outlet for outlet velocity and we consider the flow to be steady. So, with these assumptions now we will derive the equations for energy transfer and that is based on the principles of rate of change of angular momentum that is angular momentum theorem that is known as angular momentum theorem. Angular momentum theorem. Now, look what is the conservation of angular momentum? If you consider the conservation of angular momentum, therefore, we can see that if we consider a control mass system, we can tell that the rate of change of angular momentum of a control mass system, if the angular momentum is referenced with respect to an inertial frame of reference equals to the moment or torque exerted on that control mass system. Now, if we apply the same conservation principle to a control volume, because here in fluid machines we will apply this principle for a control volume considering rotor itself as a control volume. So, now we know that when these conservation principles for any extensive property of a control mass system is applied to a control volume, there is a theorem, we invoke a theorem known as Reynolds transport theorem, which makes the link between the statement of conservation of such an extensive property for this change for a control mass system to that is change for a control volume system. This property may be mass may be linear momentum, may be angular momentum. Let us consider at present we are dealing with the angular momentum. For an angular momentum, if we invoke the Reynolds transport theorem, it states like that if you recall that the Reynolds according to this Reynolds transport theorem, the rate of change of angular momentum of a control mass system equals to the rate of increase of angular momentum within a control volume plus net rate of a flux of angular momentum from the control volume at its control at its surface that is control surface. So, this is the Reynolds transport theorem and this is valid for linear momentum, this is valid for mass also. So, therefore, we can write this therefore, this theorem like this and before that if we write the angular momentum as m, angular momentum we write angular momentum, angular momentum nomenclature as m and m per unit mass as eta. Then we can write the theorem, the Reynolds according to Reynolds transport theorem that the rate of change of angular momentum 
for a control mass system equals to the rate of change of angular momentum if this is eta angular momentum per unit mass eta rho d v for a control volume plus this is the rate of increase time rate of change of angular momentum within the control volume d v is an elemental volume of the control volume plus the rate of change of angular rate of net rate of efflux of angular momentum across the control surface. What is this? Eta is the angular momentum per unit mass and this quantity represents the mass flux over a elemental area d a, where v r is the velocity vector relative to the control volume. Here definitely, I have forgotten to tell you, we define the control volume. The fluid inscribing the rotor within the rotor, we take as control volume. Okay? And V r is the velocity of the fluid relative to the control volume. N is the vector, unit vector directed, radia, directed outward of the area A. So, this is used as the vector, the area is used as a vector by using this unit vector whose direction is ready is outward outward of the radi, uh, uh, outward of the area d a radially outward of the area d a and this is the velocity relative to the control volume okay now here eta this angular momentum per unit mass can be written as r cross v where r is the radial location or the positional vector of the point where we are defining the angular momentum per unit mass and v is the velocity vector. If this is referenced with respect to a inertial frame or static frame of reference, then we describe the angular momentum m with respect to a Cartesian as with respect to a inertial frame of reference. Okay? Now, here you see the v 1 is the velocity at the inlet which has got three component. One is the axial direction v 1 another is the radial direction v f 1, another is the tangential direction v w 1. Similarly, this outlet velocity v 2 can be resolved into three components, one is axial direction v a 2, another is radial direction v f 2, another is the tangential direction v w 2. These are the typical nomenclatures for the velocity components at inlet and outlet both the velocities at inlet and outlet can be resolved into three respective components, axial directions, radial directions and the tangential direction. The radial direction of component is sometimes known as flow velocity. Now, with this we see now next, if the flow is steady, this part is 0. That means, rate of change of angular momentum within the control volume, the time rate of change del del t is 0, because there is no change within the control volume. That is the definition of steady flow. So, under steady state, this becomes 0. Now, we write the left hand side, that is the d m d t, that is the left hand side, we write d m d t control mass system. We, this can be written as this is the d m d t control mass system can be written as d d t of r cross v that is the per unit mass d m over the control mass system. This can be written in this way over the control mass system and this can be written equal to the torque or moment exerted by the control mass system on the control mass system exerted on the control mass system provided this is defined or this is referenced with respect to an inertial frame of reference. Okay. So, if we define the velocity with respect to an inertial frame or static frame of reference and accordingly the angular momentum we can tell the rate of change of angular momentum 
for a control mass system this can be expressed in this fashion is equal to the torque or moment applied to the control mass system. And in Reynolds transport theorem therefore, we can write this torque or moment applied exerted on the control mass system which coincides the control volume at that instant. That means, this is the torque or moment exerted on the control volume itself. So, then it becomes the control surface that means, the this quantity V r dot n d a. That means, this becomes that the torque or moment exerted on the control volume. Control volume is the fluid containing in the rotor. This is the control volume. This is the C V control volume. It is now we can write the torque or moment exerted on this C V is equal to the net rate of angular momentum efflux from the C V. This is 0 under steady state net rate of angular momentum efflux from the control volume. Now, if we designate outflow and inflow area like R 1 radial location inflow R 2 radial location outflow. If we can then the R H s can be written sorry I will take another now you can see here that can you see yes then R H s can be written let I write this thing again. Now, T is equal to T is equal to eta rho V r dot n d a. Now, if we can identify the outflow and inflow area separately, then we can write this as eta rho V r dot n d a a outflow plus eta rho v r all nomenclature are known to you as I have told inflow a inflow. Now, here you see since the outflow and inflow both let us consider outflow the radial location is fixed as R 2 at all outflow points and we consider that the tangential component of velocity which is perpendicular to the radial location that is also constant at all points. This is a very simple assumption based on which we are deducing this expression. So, if that is the case the first term becomes equal to in that case before telling that we write eta for example, at outflow can be written as R 2 into V w 2. Similarly, eta at inflow can be written as R 1 into V w 1. What is eta? Eta is R cross V that is the angular momentum per unit mass. Under this simple condition, simple case this can be written. So, without going for any complex vector calculations, we can simply and this is the mass flow rate, this is the mass flow rate at outflow and mass flow rate at inflow. If eta is constant comes out of this, so integration of this will be the mass flow rate. So, therefore, torque can be written, the first one can be written as R 2 V W 2 into m dot outflow because this quantity comes out. So, this is the mass flow rate. Similarly, this is m dot outflow and this is m dot inflow, this quantity, only this quantity. So, therefore, this will be with a minus sign. Why minus sign? Because the outflow and inflow finally comes with a minus sign. Why? because this dot product if you consider a control volume let us have a area d a and let us have a velocity here v 2 the outlet velocity this is the normal direction they are in the same direction. But whereas, this d a where the normal outward is like that 
whether the velocity is in this direction. So, therefore, if you make this dot product, we will see automatically this term will come with a negative sign. So, therefore, this is the angular momentum outflow, rate of angular momentum outflow, this is rate of angular momentum inflow and with a minus sign, which will automatically come by this sign convention. If you make the vector operation in case of a very generalized three dimensional analysis, but here it is so simple that eta outflow is r 2 v w 2 in eta inflow is r 1 v w 1. We take it out and simply we just write it is m outflow and m inflow with a minus sign. And since it is at steady state m outflow equals to m dot m dot outflow is equal to m dot inflow is equal to m dot. So, therefore, we can write t is equal to m dot into r 2 v w 2 minus r 1 v w 1. So, therefore, we get that the torque that is or moment applied on this control volume is equal to m dot r 2 v w 2 minus r 1. The nomenclature is that v w 2 and v w 1 are the tangential velocity component of the fluid tangential velocity or the tangential component of the fluid velocity at the outlet, tangential component of the fluid velocity at the inlet r 2 r 1 are the radial locations at the outlet and inlet. Now, we know that the energy rate of energy rate of energy rate of energy okay, rate of energy exerted rate of energy given rather given to the fluid to the fluid E dot if I write is nothing but the torque or moment exerted on the fluid into the angular velocity. So, the rate of energy given to the fluid will be equal to m w into r 2 v w 2 minus r 1 v w 1 into the angular constant angular velocity of the rotor. This can be written as m dot v w 2 u 2 minus v w 1 u 1, where u 2 is r 2 omega and u 1 is r 1 omega and they represent the rotor velocity, the linear velocity of the rotor, which is the radius times the angular speed. This is the at inlet, this is the velocity of the rotor, linear velocity of the rotor at the outlet this is the linear velocity of the rotor. So, therefore, they represents the linear velocities of the rotor. So, v w 2 u 2 minus v w 1 u 1. So, the rate of energy given to the fluid is can be written like this. Now, usually we express this in terms of the energy per unit weight. Now, if we write the energy per unit weight given to the fluid E, energy per unit weight given to the fluid E is equal to E dot by m dot g, then we can write it is simply an algebraic manipulation energy per unit weight. Now, in fluid mechanics always people use this energy per unit weight E, which is given as head h. Energy per unit weight is known as head. The energy per unit weight has a beauty that this dimension is linear dimension that means in meter in SI unit. So, therefore, in hydraulics and in fluid mechanics we use the energy per unit weight as head. Usually, it is the terminology used in hydraulics. So, here I will use in terms of that in fluid machines that head that is energy per unit weight given to the fluid is expressed as this. Now, there is a convention similar to that of thermodynamics that when the energy mechanical energy or work being delivered by a system or a control volume it is taken as positive whether it is added to the system is taken as negative. So, here also in the similar convention that when the head that is energy per unit weight is delivered by the fluid of the machine that means, delivered by the fluid to the machine then it is considered as positive while it is given to the fluid by the machines it is considered to be negative with that 
consideration h is written as v w 1 u 1 minus v w 2 u 2 by its sign convention not from this formula otherwise this would be minus h h is this but by sign convention we write h that means the positive value of this means the head that is energy per unit weight has been delivered by the fluid that means in case of turbines which delivered mechanical energy which delivers work mechanical work v w 2 that means for turbines i write for turbines therefore v w 1 u 1 is greater than v w 2 u 2 okay and for pumps or compressor for pumps or compressors just the reverse v w 1 u 1 is less than v w 2 u 2 they are negative so this is the with usual sign convention we write that h that is the energy per unit weight delivered by the fluid to the machine is given by this and this equation is known as Euler's equation Euler's LERS Euler's equation Euler's equation of fluid machines Euler's I think you have understood this thing so with a very simple in a very simple case with all these assumptions we have derived so this is a very simple case actual cases are different but this gives a guideline now again i tell that the assumptions are like that the flow at the inlet is uniform over the entire azimuthal direction similarly at the outlet flow is steady and we have the solutions of the flow field at the outlet for a given flow field at the inlet but this is at the same time is very generalized expression in a sense it does not take care of the path taken by the fluid in the rotor and the way the density is varying so this does not take care of that so whether density varies or not whether the fluid path is different or not whatever path may be taken this is the expression under these assumptions that just now i have told this is the for the head that is energy per unit weight delivered by the fluid to the machine v w 1 u 1 minus v w 2 u 2 by g the nomenclatures are v w 1 v w 2 are the tangential component of fluid velocities at inlet and outlet u 1 and u 2 are respectively the rotor velocities at inlet and outlet and this equation is known as Euler's equation of fluid machines and this is the basic equation of energy transfer between the fluid and the rotor and we will uh, deduce many other equations from these equations these equations will be expressed in terms of uh, uh, different components uh, of the fluid velocities which I will discuss in the next class thank you